In this video we're going to take a look at how we can create screws and bolts in Blender and anything else that's got a, a thread. We'll also look at how we can create a procedural metal material as well. The video is going to be quite in depth. Uh, the actual screw would probably take less than a minute or two to actually create. Um, but the idea is not really to model a screw uh, but more to learn the various modeling tools available in Blender. Um, selection tools, things like proportional editing, um, data tab, material setup. So it's going to be quite in depth and the idea is that once you've watched it you will be able to model a screw but more importantly you'll also be able to use the skills that you learn to model a, a variety of different things as well. The first thing you'll need to do is just go into your preferences so edit preferences and make sure you've got the add curve extra objects add-on enabled and once you've done that press shift A and then go into the curve menu and choose the uh, curve spirals and then Archimedean and you need to set these settings up so that it uh, looks sort of like a thread of the screw that you want to model so initially you're probably going to get it as looking something like this so what you want to do is increase the height so if I just zoom in by pressing full stop on the numpad I want to increase the height so it looks about right for one thread uh, so maybe something like that and once I've got the height for the uh, distance between the thread correct I can then increase the number of turns to something like uh, 16 or maybe 32 and I can also change the width so it, it's more the sort of scale that I want just bear in mind that this part of the thread is actually going to be the inner part of the thread so have it um, the sort of the width you would expect of a screw that doesn't have the thread on it so I'm going to bring that in a little bit maybe to about here something like that okay and importantly make sure you've got steps set to 32 that just gives us enough topology to be able to do uh, some of the things we need to do later on in the modeling procedure and that's it so click on the curve and now we've got the curve we need to be able to edit this so in order to edit it as a mesh we need to click on the object menu and choose convert to and then choose mesh from curve so click on that and we've now got a uh, editable mesh so into edit mode uh, make sure you press 2 on your keyboard I'll just go into a different view so you can see it better so press 2 on your keyboard so that you're in edge mode and then press A to select everything and now we're going to extrude that so press E and we want to extrude it only on the Z axis so press the Z on your keyboard and then you can see we can just move the mouse without having to worry about uh, whether it's going off course so Z and then move it until it looks about right just bear in mind that the gap is going to be the thread so try and get that proportioned correctly at this stage if you can so I think maybe something like this and then what I need to do is connect up this edge and this edge and then press F to fill those in and I'll need to do the same at the bottom as well so this edge and this edge and F and then I want to select the border all the way up the uh, screw so I'll press the alt key and then press any edge that's on that border like so and I need to deselect this one and I need to do the same at the top so deselect this one as well that was this one just here and now I want to bridge these edges so I'll press ctrl E to bring up the edge menu and then choose bridge edge loops and that will give us the thread so now what I need to do is extrude these outwards along the normal um, the first thing though before I do that if I just select everything in fact deselect don't need to have them selected click on the uh, icon in the top here the drop down and then choose to show the uh, face orientation so blue is the face that's pointing outwards so that's the way the normals pointing and red is the face that's supposed to be pointing inwards and as we can see these are actually flipped incorrectly so I'll just turn I'll just select everything so press number three to go into face mode and then press A to select them all and then F3 to bring up the uh, menu the search menu 
and I want to type in there um, flip normals and then press return and then you can see the blue is now facing outwards which is what we want so I'll just turn off the face orientation okay uh, still in face mode so number three on the keyboard we now need to select the uh, loop again so alt and then click on this edge and then we need to deselect that one and we'll need to deselect the one at the bottom as well so this one what I want to do now is extrude these along the normal so as we saw before the normal is the it's the uh, indicated by the blue on the face orientation and uh, just to further visualize what a normal actually is if we have a look on the face normals just here and turn those on we get this blue line let's just decrease the size of those a little bit so we get this blue line sticking out of each face and that indicates uh, the face normal direction and basically it's a 90 degree angle from the center of each face uh, pointing outwards so we want to extrude along each of those so let's just turn those normals off. So normally if you're going to extrude you'd probably just press E on the keyboard and then you could extrude. But if we don't do it along the normals this is what's going to happen. So I'll just undo that. And I want to press Alt E instead to bring up the alternative extrude menu. And I want to choose extrude faces along normals. And then when I do that you can see we're now extruding outwards. Um, based on each face and once we've um, moved off of that um, sort of automatic um, extruding you know real-time extruding with the mouse we can still access it if we want to change it down at the bottom here so we can get that to something that we think is realistic for a thread I think maybe that looks pretty good uh, but the problem is the thread would probably be thinner um, on the outer edge so what we need to do is we need to find a way of scaling those down okay so to scale them down you might think oh, I'll just press S to scale and then Z but the problem is it's going to base the origin uh, so the pivot point rather um, of the operation on the center of all the selected faces and we, we don't want that, we want them to scale uh, on an individual basis uh, like we did with the extrude tool so the way to do it is to go into number 2 so edge mode and then holding alt and shift click on this loop and then alt and shift will click on this loop and that will leave us just with these uh, the edge ring which goes all the way down to the bottom and we just need to check we've not got anything selected that we don't want and that seems to be fine so if we press SZ now we're still getting the same problem and the reason is if we go into the uh, full stop on the keyboard menu which is the pivot point menu we're actually uh, using the bounding box and we need to use the individual origins and also if we go into the comma menu uh, we're using global that should be fine actually let's just press S and Z give that a try and you can see now if we scale it's scaling locally to each of those edges okay so that's that part done we've got the thread mainly done we're going to tweak that a bit more later but what we need to do now is flatten out the top and the bottom of this object so still in edge mode press the alt key and then keeping it held down click over one of these edges so that we've got this border selected and now what I want to do is just come back out of the so into the full stop and then just change this back to bounding box center and press the S to use choose scale Z to limit that to the um, Z axis and then zero and that will flatten it out completely now we don't want these two edges because this is creating a triangle or two triangles so what we need to do is press number two click on this edge the control X will dissolve the edge and then if we press number one um, and just move this vertex you'll notice we've got two so to fix that 
what we can do is select all vertices by pressing A and then press Alt M uh, which might just be M if you're using a later version of Blender and then choose by distance and specified by this distance in the bottom left hand corner any uh, pair of vertices that are within that distance from each other will become one so this should now because these vertices are basically right on top of each other they should now be one so if I click on that and move it you can see they've now been collapsed so we need to do the same at the bottom back into edge mode and select this border and then SZ0 number two get rid of this edge control X to dissolve it and just in case you're not sure what a dissolve is if I just undo that and if I press X and then delete uh, the edge this menu might be slightly different to yours but if I choose to delete the edge then you'll notice we get this gap whereas if we choose dissolve it will actually get rid of the vert uh, the edge but it won't delete the face so I'll just undo that and I'll do control X to dissolve and then we're left with that but we're, we're going to have the two vertices again here so we need to merge them so select all vertices and then alt M or if you don't want to select all of the vertices what you can do is go into wireframe mode and then press B to box select and then move over like that and that will select them both and if you look at the bottom uh, right here you've got verts 2 so we've got two verts selected out of 4033 if we weren't in wireframe mode and we tried to do the same thing then it would only select uh, oh, back into edit mode sorry number one select this without being in wireframe mode then you'll notice we've only got one vert selected so the way to select through the object is to go into wireframe or alternatively you can click on this icon which will turn x-ray mode on but I find that quite difficult to work with because as soon as you go like this you know it can become difficult to see what you're doing um, but if I now drag across you'll notice we've got uh, two vertices selected so it works the same as wireframe just a slightly different uh, representation of the geometry but anyway so I'll press alt M and then choose by distance and you'll look at the bottom it says removed one vertex or well, one vertices should be one vertex um, so that's fixed okay I'll just turn the x-ray mode off so what I want to do now is select this top edge make sure we're in edit mode so number two alt click this border I'm going to bring that down a little bit so it's about level here and then I want to extrude that up a tiny amount and then I want to scale that out something like this because it does tend to uh, come outwards slightly but I think we'll notice we've got a problem it's not coming out as we wanted it to so I just want to undo that and now if I go into the full stop menu uh, bounding box center is selected and global is selected so really that should be coming straight out I'm not sure why it isn't to be honest that's a bit strange let's just try it, it may actually be coming straight out I think it's just the possibly the view let's just go into orthographic no it's definitely not coming out straight uh, straight out oh sorry my mistake I was thought I thought I was extruding it uh, in which case you would get this sort of behavior when in actual fact I was scaling it so it is going to be this is correct so I want to bring it out so S and then I want to bring it down a bit so it's level with this edge and the most um, accurate way to do that is to turn on snapping so the snapping menu at the top here we've got things that we can snap to and I want to choose to snap to a vertex so if I take this down now and hold the control key you'll see it's going to snap everything to that vertex what I need to do is limit that movement to the z-axis like so and then hold control and then it will snap without deforming so now that edge is completely um, level with this one so 
let's just come back out of orthographic what I'll do now is extrude that upward somewhere to about there perhaps and then I want to create the head of the screw so I'll E to extrude and rather than doing it like this I'm going to choose S to scale that out I'll just zoom out to get a better idea I think yeah that looks about right and then I'll choose EZ to bring that up to about here and then ES again so I can either scale this way or I can scale inwards which is what I want to do and this is where the choosing 32 steps is important at the beginning when we set the spiral up uh, because we can now use something called grid fill by pressing Control F to bring up the face menu and choosing grid fill and then that will give us a nice uh, grid of faces connecting all of these uh, uh, edges up and it only works if you've got an even number of vertices around the edge which is why we chose 32 and also we chose 32 because it gives us a bit of extra geometry to work with so what I'll do is I'll select the face mode by pressing number 3 on the keyboard select this face and then what I could do is I could press uh, I could select these one at a time but that's quite time consuming so what you'll want to do is click this one and then you could either click here with control and then click shift here to select a new one and then click control again to find the shortest path like so okay and the other way to do it and the better way in this scenario we just want to select everything that is within the range of this face and this face so I will click this one and then I'll shift and control uh, with held down on the keyboard I'll then left click on this face and then it will it will find the shortest path but fill the region as well I'll do the same here so holding shift so I can make a new selection whilst keeping the existing selection active so shift there and then control here sorry uh, undo control shift here and then we've got this cross so it's a bit rounded which I don't really want so what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo I'm just going to deselect everything press number one and then in fact what I'll do is I'll show you another tool so with these faces selected let's go over to the data panel on your right hand side and we'll create a vertex group so click plus and we'll call this cross and then click assign to assign that selection to this vertex group and what we'll do now is press number one on the keyboard and then we'll press the uh, we'll click on the center vertex and I want to scale that in so I want to turn on proportional editing and then if I go into the top view something like this and just keep an eye on the shape so at the moment it's quite curved and I want to bring that in and I want to limit it in fact just to these uh, vertices I don't want it to select to affect these so I'll another tool number three I'll click one face and then I'll choose the select linked linked flat faces which I've got uh, a shortcut key of shift control alt F uh, but you that's not default so you'll need to set that up but uh, link flat faces will select all of the connected faces that are within this angle here uh, set up at the bottom so what I want to do is just isolate the selection temporarily by pressing shift H and this will ensure that anything I do won't affect the rest of the model so press number one to go back into uh, vertex mode and then I want to choose scale and I want to increase that down I just want to scale it and I'm using the mouse wheel by the way just to change the size of this uh, circle of a, of, a, of a sort of a fall off uh, which d it defines how far the effect of the tool I'm using will will reach so let's do it to about I don't want it to affect the outer so somewhere about there I think maybe a tiny bit more I think that's, that looks pretty good so it's reasonably squared
So I'll press Alt H to unhide the rest of the model, which is unaffected. And now what I'll do is number three, and I want to select that uh, cross that I had selected before. So what I'll do in the data panel again, this time I'll click on, I'll just deselect everything else, and then I'll click on select, and that will select that cross again for us. I want to inset this because I'm going to be using a subsurface uh, modifier and that will make sure that it's not too curved on the edge and then I want to extrude that inwards so E and then I want to extrude that down somewhere about here and I also want to scale that inwards uh, I need to turn off proportional editing at the top and which I can do by pressing O on the keyboard then I'll scale that inwards and we've got a bit of a uh, angle coming inwards uh, towards the bottom and then I also want to lastly inset that a selection of faces for the same reason I want the subsurface modifier to not make it too curved down there and it will also ensure that I don't get any shading artifacts where it transitions from the curved uh, area to the flat area okay and then lastly I want to bevel the edge so into edge mode and I'll choose this and I control B to bevel, bring it into about here. Something like this. And I think I want to bring the entire thing down slightly. So what I'll do is press number two on the keyboard, hold alt down, and then click on this edge. And this will select this loop all the way around. And now what I want to do is select everything that's within that loop. So to do that, in the select menu, choose select loops, and then select loop in a region. And that will select all of the faces within that region. And now what I can do is bring that down, so GZ, somewhere about there perhaps. That's more like what I wanted to, uh, to happen. So I now click on this one because I want that to be quite flat and the reason I'm doing that is because if I now come out of edit mode and I'm just going to turn on uh, smooth shading so F3 menu again and then smooth and shade smooth okay and I want to add a subdivision modifier so the, the shortcut to do that is by pressing hold down control and pressing either 1, 2 or 3 and that will indicate the number you choose it will uh, choose the number of subdivisions in the viewport so you can see it's a bit too curved at the top I want that to flatten off so what I'll do is back into edit mode and by just beveling this edge control B and I'll turn the subdivisions down by using the mouse wheel and I want to bring that down somewhere like this and that will maybe I'll maybe give it one more so we've got three uh, two segments, sorry, and then that will make that will ensure that the subdivision modifier doesn't curve out that area as much as it was doing. So probably still a bit too curvy around here. So what I'm going to do is create. If I just turn that on, I'll create another edge around about here, and I can control how curved that is. So I think maybe something about there. And I also want this part to be flat. So Control R again. Left click and then move it in to drag that in. And that will control that part as well. Okay. So that's the top part of the screw done. I'm still going to tidy these threads up because they're a little bit too um, curved where they meet the screw. I'd like it to be more of a harsh connection. Uh, but I'll come back to that shortly. So the bottom part, if I right, uh, sorry, Alt, left click the bottom edge, what I want to do is, a screw would um, normally taper in slightly at the bottom, and the thread would become a little bit smaller as well. So what I'm going to do is turn proportional edit back on, leave it on smooth, and then S to scale, and that will scale all of that inwards but the problem is you'll notice the I'll just uh, 
apply that. The thread here is becoming further apart. It should be the same width apart as it is all the way down. So I'll just undo what I did, and this time I'll do S, and rather than letting it become wide, uh, further apart, I'll press Shift Z on the keyboard, and that will limit the scaling to just those two um, axes, the X and the Y, but it will lock the Z in place so that it's not affecting the Z scale. So I'll maybe do something like that, maybe just increase that slightly. Um, not too keen on the shape actually, so I'll just come into the menu for the proportional edit. I'm going to change this to something maybe uh, spherical. So let's just give that a try. S Z, uh, sorry, S Shift Z. Bring those in. Maybe bring that down. No, I liked it better before. So let's just try a few of the others. Maybe sharp, S, shift Z, bring that in. Yeah, I think I prefer the sharp one. So, somewhere about there. And then we've got a bit of a fall off towards the bottom. And the thread is also getting uh, less prominent. I just need to cap the bottom off. So, I'll press E, Z. I'm just going to turn the subdivision off so we can see what we're doing. So obviously that, that was completely uh, over the top. So I'll press E and then S, in fact, to bring it in. Just turn proportion edit off and size that how I want it. And then I'll do ES again to bring that in one more time. And then Alt M to bring up the merge menu, which is now uh, M without the Alt. Uh, Alt M is going to be split, uh, I understand. Uh, but in the current version, it's still alt -M. Um And then we'll choose at center. So we're going to collapse that at center, which will collapse all those faces into one vertex. Okay, and I'll select this edge loop. And then I'll scale that in a little bit. And I want to add a bit more geometry. So I'll do Control r and then just use my mouse wheel to add a few extra loops. Somewhere about there. And I want to change this. To, oh, actually, it's already on sharp, so I'll leave it on sharp. And I'm going to go into vertex mode, select the middle vertex, and I want to bring that down. So if I GZ and then use my mouse wheel, oh, need to turn proportional editing back on. So GZ, and I just use my mouse wheel to control that fall off. I think I want it somewhere around about here. And then I'm going to change this to constant. And that will basically be the same as selecting all of these vertices. Just need to make sure I don't accidentally move any of these. So GZ, that looks pretty good. You see, if I go too high, then it's going to affect that one. So mouse wheel upwards, and then I can bring that into something uh, that I want. Something like that. Okay, and I'll turn the subdivision back on. And now we're getting a pretty nice looking uh, screw. I just want to tighten it up a little bit around the edge of this. So the way to do that, just turn the subdivision modifier off. Well, there's a number of ways. We can either select all of the edges. So we're going to number two, all of that loop and all of that loop. And that'll select the loop all the way down on both sides. What we can do is go into the N menu, so press N, and then on the on the right hand side we can increase the bevel weight to one, and then we could add a bevel modifier, and I'll move that above the subdivision by clicking on this arrow. If I just turn back on the subdivision modifier now, come out of edit mode. And make sure I've on the bevel modifier that I've limited it by the weight, so that at the moment you can see all of the vert uh, edges are getting a bevel, which is not what we want. We only want it on the edges that we've applied this weight to. So choose weight as the limit method, and then you can see it sharpened up uh, the edges there. So if I turn that bevel off, 
it's it's too smooth and if I turn it back on then it's it's nice and sharp uh, if you don't want to do the bevel modifier you can do it manually so I'll, I'll show you how to do that as well so into edit mode I'll just turn off the subdivision modifier what I would do is um, I'll select one of these in fact they might still be selected just turn Portional editing off, yeah, they're still selected. If they weren't still selected, what you could do is click one of the edges and then press Shift G to bring up the select similar menu. And now I want to select everything that's got the same bevel weight. So if I click on bevel, that will select all of those edges, like so. So what I could do now is I could press Ctrl and B, bring up the bevel menu, and I could manually bevel these uh, as I saw fit. So perhaps I will actually do this method. Let's just have a look at what that looks like. Turn the bevel off still, but turn the subdivision back on and back out of edit mode. And we're getting a similar sort of effect. So that's the screw modelled. What we'll do now is move on to creating the uh, material. In fact, one thing I did want to show before we move on to making the material is I want the thread to come inwards a little bit so it's not as prominent when it gets closer to the top. Uh, I want it to be more lined up with this ridge that we've got so it more gently goes back into the shape of the screw. And uh, what we'll do to do this, back into edit mode, let me just turn off the subdivision modifier so we can more easily see what we're doing. And I'm also going to turn on... Uh, auto smooth in normals so it's not looking as strange uh, into edit mode and what I want to do now is select all of these faces so I press number three on the keyboard and I want to select the entire outer part of the thread so I'll hold the alt key left click on this edge which is the ring all the way down I want to deselect anything that's not on this outer edge so I'll press B using the middle mouse I can then get rid of those and be on that one as well, make sure we've got everything deselected that we don't want selected. In fact, we've gone all the way around there, so that's not ideal. And what I'll do is press Z, wireframe, B, do that. And then let's just have a look at the Alt, Shift click on there. Alt click there. So the, the bevel is the problem that we've created. It's now um, going all the way around because of that bevel so temporarily I'm going to press number three and I'm going to uh, which one shall we delete let's delete this one this will be easier to replace so I'll press X and then choose to delete the faces and if I click on there now then it's only because we've, we've basically broken the loop it was coming all the way off of there and then up and around and back down so that's just temporarily that's what we need I'll also I think we'll delete this face on this one X A to delete the face and got that selected now just deselect oops, all of these ones and there we are so we've got those faces selected what I want to do is in fact, let's also select this face so we can see what we're working with. And I want to press Shift H. Just check we didn't have anything selected at the bottom. Yeah, that's fine. And I want to bring this uh, face inwards so it's more level with this face. So if I... Uh, let's think the best way to do this. I need to place something in the centre which is actually, we've already got the 3D cursor uh, bang in the center of the uh, circle of the, you know, the, the thread that we initially created. So what I'll do is I'll press the full, as uh, the comma key, make sure that's still on global, that's fine. And I'll press the full stop key and I want to choose the pivot point. So the pivot point, the bounding box is not going to be any good. Um, I want to choose the 3D cursor because the 3D cursor is dead central. So I've selected that 
and now with that one face select at the top if I just show you what happens if I scale that and just make sure I've turned on proportional editing and pull that back to smooth turn on proportional editing and then if I scale this now and just use the mouse wheel to increase the influence you'll see it's not doing exactly what we want it's moving up and down as well as towards the center so it's, it's trying to get towards that 3d cursor basically so to make sure it only goes in one direction I need to press shift and Z on the keyboard and then it will only go in and out because we've locked the Z axis uh, the problem is though if I come in a little bit closer so S Z uh, sorry S shift Z the face that we want to align to is also moving and that's because we've not selected one of the options we need to select in the proportional editing menu so if we just click on this um, drop down we need to choose connected only and that will ensure that anything that's not connected to this face won't be influenced and obviously this face is not connected to that one so if I S shift Z and now scale then it's going to fall off until we get it about where we want it and I, we don't have to influence too far down maybe to about there I would say I've gone a little bit too far so I just S shift Z let's bring that back out in fact if it's probably going to be easier if I go into an orthographic view so S shift Z and I want to have it maybe to about I think probably to about there okay and then if we come back out we can see now that that thread is slowly coming back inwards towards um, towards the main body of the screw so let's just see what this looks like we might need to tweak it but if we just um, turn on subdivision again got a slight problem there and the reason is uh, if I press alt H we forgot, well I forgot, that I need to replace this face so the fastest way to do it is press number 2 on the keyboard and choose this edge here and just press the F key and that will fill that one in and then we'll do the same at the bottom where we got rid of whoop, this face so I'll press the ALT and left click on that edge to select the border, the entire border I mean I could have just selected this one edge and pressed F but uh, either ways works okay back out of edit mode I mean we could tidy this up down here as well if we wanted to um, but it's not that important because it's so small once we've got the subdivision turned on it's you can't really tell anyway I mean I could, I could also bring that in slightly same as we did at the top but uh, if you want to do that you can uh, but it's, it's quite small so I'm going to leave that so back out of edit mode and I'm pretty happy with that so yep yeah, now we will actually move on to making the material okay so I'm in my uh, material workspace which is something I've created uh, it's very easy to do, all you do is you right click on one of your workspaces click on duplicate um, and then you can just add or remove panels as you want and then you've got you can more quickly um, sort of work on the task at hand so this one is select is set up with a 3d viewport and a shader editor whereas if I go to lighting uh, I've got the I've got two shader editors one for the world uh, one for the materials on the objects I've got a viewport for the actual uh, what's been rendered so I can see what the lighting looks like and then I've got a just a normal solid view where I can move lights around um, you know change views into top view and things so it's very it's a very good idea to set up your own workspaces so back I go back to the material creation mode I want to add a material to this I'm using Eevee for this example by the way um, but the, the the material will translate equally as well to cycles so I'll click on new make sure I've got the object selected and turn overlays on click on new and now we've got a principled shader uh, attached to this object and what I want to do is um, make it metallic so the first thing I'll do is turn up metallic to one and it's now a metallic material it's a bit too rough though um, so what I'll do is just turn that roughness down something like that that's 
quite clean um, probably unrealistically clean so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dirty that up a little bit and make it more realistic and the way I'm going to do it is by using uh, something called a Musgrave texture so shift A with your mouse hovered over the shader editor and then choose search or press S and I'm going to type in Musgrave M-U-S uh, Musgrave texture and make sure you've got the Node Wrangler add-on enabled it will speed up your workflow in the shader editor to do that again edit preferences in the add-on section just type node and then uh, node wrangler just enable that one and that will automate a number of tasks for us in the shader editor so if I control and shift click on this Musgrave texture and this is why I wanted the uh, node wrangler add-on enabled by the way um, amongst other reasons we'll get the output of the Musgrave directly into the material output so it'll bypass anything else so we can concentrate on the texture that we're actually trying to uh, set up currently so if we look at it uh, it's a bit too large so I'm going to change that something like this and I just want to check in the end menu that the scale of the item is correct it's set to 1 yeah just press N again to close that back down so it's, it's quite stretched um, it might look alright, but I'm going to, um, what I'm actually going to do is click on the Musgrave texture and press Ctrl T, uh, another function provided by the Node Wrangler, and I want to change this from generated to object. And once I've done that, you'll notice it's more evenly distributed across the model. So that's fine. What we can do now is, is tweak uh, this Musgrave so that it gives us sort of a dirty uh, look across the model but, but with quite a bit of detail as well so the first thing I'm going to do is just turn the dimension down a bit and I'm going to increase the lacunarity uh, lacunarity I think you pronounce it something like this and I want a bit more detail like so and then we've got a bit of a uh, we've broken up that sort of very very clean effect that we had before well we will have shortly when I uh, use this texture we've just created so I'm going to firstly plug this into the roughness so I'm just going to control shift click on the principle so we get that back and now you'll see it's very glossy um, so I'm going to plug this into the roughness and now the roughness is no longer being controlled by what we had before it's being controlled by this Musgrave texture. So the Musgrave texture, as we saw before, was outputting black and white very distinctly. Um, what we need to do is control that. So if I do a Shift A and then S to search and then I type Mix RGB and then I'm going to plug this in there and I'm going to change this from the top slot which it's defaulted into into the factor and then I want to change one colour to black and the other one to white and we can control just how rough or how glossy it is by changing the colours of these two items so black is completely glossy white, completely white, is completely rough so we don't want to be completely rough, maybe something like this we're getting a little bit of variation there and I maybe want it not to be quite so glossy so I'll just turn it up a tiny bit just have a look around the model and you can see we are getting varying degrees of roughness across the model now and what I also want to do is just give it a little bit of bump um, so I'll use the same thing again I'm going to copy this uh, and there's two ways you can copy you can press shift D and drag it down but the problem is that you've then got to mess about reconnecting it so I press X to delete that if you press Control shift D it will keep the connection with the previous node uh, and I want to plug this into a bump node so shift A S choose bump I need to plug this into the height I need to plug the normal output of the bump into the normal input of the uh, principal shader 
and then it gives us this really uh, over the top bumpiness so what I'll do is just turn that strength down until it looks more like I want it to look so I want it to be quite subtle maybe something like that I also want to change this to black and white there we are we've got that and lastly what I want to do is change the colour so the bits that are not as glossy maybe I want those to look more like rust for example so I'm going to take this node and I'm going to do Control shift d again and I want to just have a quick check of which which is white and which is black so shift click on this one so the white area is going to be I believe the bottom so I'll just change that to red temporarily turn it up as well I think the white area goes to the bottom of the mix node so you've got it outputs black and white which we can see here it goes into the factor and then if it's black I think it gets the top and if it white if it's white it will get the bottom let's just test that control shift control shift so yeah white goes to the bottom so you've got the white areas there and as soon as I look at this one it's now red so I'll just plug that into the input of the principled so wire that up, control shift click on this one and I want to change the top one to a whitish colour so more of a metal colour and I think I'll take, make the bottom one maybe a bit of a rusty colour so I'll just move it more towards the brown and then just turn the value down on the right hand side until it looks something like that and I'm not very happy with the uh, the actual placement of the rust and you know the Musgrave texture. So now I'm going to tweak this a little bit. So maybe turn that scale down. Something like uh, like this, and then just tweak the. So the dimension is how blurry that is. I want to keep that quite maybe just very slight blur. The detail is, is how much detail is on the actual pattern and the lucanarity is the number of uh, times that that pattern repeats itself within itself. So let's just see what happens if I, if you turn it too high you basically go back to what you had before. So turn it down a bit. Let me tweak this. Maybe change the scale. I think that's uh, a bit too high for the strength again, so 0 0.01 perhaps. And it's a bit too glossy, so I'm going to turn that blackness up. Something like that. And I'm going to turn that whiteness down for the colour. It's a bit too bright. I don't like this brown, it's way too brown. I'm going to turn that saturation down and maybe turn the brightness up a tiny amount. Saturation down again, something more like that. Just a very slight. I think I want to just tweak this a little bit more so. Let's try to bring that scale down. Let's just have a quick look at what's happening. So maybe bring that down quite a bit in fact. Maybe somewhere about there. 16, let's just see. Yeah, I'll leave that set to 16. Um, and I want to bring this right down as well. Maybe, yeah, something like this I think. Um, well, that's, that's pretty nice. And then we can just, if we want to, we can use the dimension to sort of increase the black areas and then slightly smooth out or blur the noisy areas as well. So let's try it, something like this. Maybe a bit more. And then what we'll do is we'll go back to the principal shader, control shift on there. Yeah, I think I prefer that. That looks uh, quite a bit nicer.
Maybe turn that bump up very slightly. Something like this. Yeah. And again, if you want to make this look more like rust, you can change the colour of these parts. So I change that to uh, sorry, the the bottom one. Change this to a sort of ready rusty colour. But I think I uh, I think I preferred it before actually. I should just turn that. You could do that if you wanted. You can have a play about it. Uh, but there's the idea. So, yep, that's the complete video. Hopefully that's helpful and uh, didn't go on too long. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.